divide by 1. I'm just going to finish this section on determinants with this example here. So they give you two matrices, A and B, and they ask you a fairly innocuous question. Firstly, you want the determinant of A times B. Okay, so I multiply out, I won't do all the arithmetic, you multiply A times B, you get that matrix, and then you get the determinant of that, which turns out to be 546. So just that times that minus that times that. So that's easy. That was just um, to show that you can get the determinant of AB. On the other hand, if you go to get the determinant of BA, so I claim, without doing any calculation, the determinant of BA is zero without doing any calculations at all. Here I had to, no easy way, I can't get that number just staring at these matrices, I have to do the math, but the determinant of, of BA, I claim, is going to be zero uh, without doing all the calculations. And how do we see that? Well, if we look at this uh, matrix A, it's, a um, it's got three columns and two rows, so uh, if I try and solve AX equals zero, then I know it's got infinitely many solutions. It's got at least one, you put X to be zero, and if by the size of it, you see it's going to have infinitely many solutions. So this has infinitely many solutions. Okay, well, if I multiply by B, well, BA times X is also um, uh, equal zero. That also has infinitely many solutions because any solution I got up there is also going to be a solution here. So this has infinitely many solutions. And of course this will be a square matrix now. And so if this has got infinitely many solutions, therefore that says that BA is not invertible. It has no inverse. And therefore, that says its determinant must be zero. And that's all you needed to do.